Hi guys, welcome to this video for the general math series on developing a formula, setting up, uh, yeah, I've forgotten. It's something about, oh, what's it about, what's it about, what's it about? Linear equations in two unknowns, ka -ching. Thank you very much. Hopefully this finds you well. Hi guys, and welcome to this, another general math video. I am Darren, math guru, and what are we looking at today? He says, looking over at the screen, developing a formula, setting up linear equations into unknowns. I barely can remember my own name in the morning, so trying to remember a title that long, <laughs> no, too much. Maybe I should get a teleprompter. Nope, too much time. Hopefully you have seen my videos before and are finding them useful. If not, just excuse this introduction because if you can click on the subscribe button on my YouTube channel, I'd be deeply grateful. It doesn't really do much because I only have my mum watching and about eight other people, but it does let me know you're watching and that I'm not sitting in a room talking to myself going slightly stir crazy. There is mathsguru.com as well, where you can head over there. It's got videos, downloadable notes, time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more and more coming every single week. So uh, hopefully you'll find that useful. Now, what are we dealing with? As I say here, we're looking at how to set up a linear equation in two unknowns. Oh. Well, do you remember previously in another video, and I hope you've watched it, we looked at looking at videos with one unknown in it? Yeah? Well, now we're gonna have two unknowns. And this is leading into a section later on in the course for simultaneous linear equations. And those things are awesome. Now, hold on a moment. Yes, you probably did them in year 10, and yes, you were like, oh, you, uh, you. don't worry about it. You're like a year older now, and your brain has matured. Your brain has worked on things whether you realize it or not, and you'll probably find it a lot, lot easier if you give it a go. If you walk in with that sort of negative ninny attitude, then I really there's nothing I can do for you at all. Please slap yourself out of it now. Remember we built, oh, I love this example, I'll keep using it over and over again. Remember this one here, we came up with an equation that said P was equal to 11 plus X. Well, in that situation, we've got one unknown. Yes, we've got the X that we didn't know and we could substitute it in, we could find tables of values, blah, 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 blah. But what if we have two unknowns? Well, as usual, it's the best thing for me to do is just to work on this with you, and I've only got one example. I am so, so sorry, guys. I haven't been able to find other examples. Um, Cambridge have been awesome in letting me use their example and so hopefully that's, that's all you're gonna need. Right, sadly, in this example, you will need to decide which two pronumials, that's my advice to you. Previously, you had to choose the letter you wanted, was it X or N or P or whatever, right? But now, I want you to realize that you're gonna choose two letters, right? In this example, you need to decide which two pronumials you would like to stand for each of the items you are selling. What? Let's read the question. Sausage rolls mm -hmm. cost a dollar thirty each, and party pies cost seventy-five cents each. Now, what do you notice? One's in dollars, one's in cents. Trying to trick you with the units. That's okay. Construct a formula for finding the cost C dollars of buying X sausage rolls and Y party pies. So first things first, they've actually told you the pronouns they want you to use. So they want you to use X for sausage rolls and Y for party buys and the total cost. Now let's go back to that idea I had earlier. If a pen costs a dollar, how much would five pens cost? Well, you'd be like five dollars, yeah. How much would 17 pens cross? Crossed? Cost, you say $17. Or well, how much would X pens cost? Well, it would be X times one in that situation, yeah? Because we take the number and multiply it by the cost. Ha, huh, hold on a moment. We now know we've got X sausage rolls. So the number of sausage rolls is X, and I know they are at $1.30 each. That's how much I'm gonna raise from selling sausage rolls. Again, if I had one sausage roll, it'd be one times $1.30. If I had two sausage rolls, two times $1.30, three sausage rolls, three times $1.30 X, just replaces the number I'm doing. Can you now see what I'm gonna do for the party pies? Well, we know the number of party pies are Y, I'm gonna times it by the cost of a party pie. Now I'm not gonna do 75, because if I times it by 75, I'm gonna get a very, very bad answer because one of those was in dollars and one of those was in cents. And because I've used dollars here, I'm gonna convert that 75 cents to 0 0.75, okay? Now again, if you remember, I can write this as 1.3X and I can write that as 0 0.75Y. And you're gonna say, wah, 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 and I'm gonna say, well, okay, what's one times two? It's two, what's two times one? It's also two. So when things are multiplied, we can swap the order, and in many cases, it makes more sense to have the letters last. So now we need the total cost. Well, the total cost is gonna be, well, effectively, those two things added together. 1.3X, because that's how much money I'm gonna get from selling the sausage rolls, plus uh, 0.75Y, and ka -ching, 
that's your right answer. Now that seems complicated, yeah? There's a lot of maths in there, but really it's just breaking it down and thinking about the cost of, yes? And, and sort of where does the letter go and am I timesing or adding? And for most of these questions, you will times. Part B, last part of the question, find the cost of 12 sausage rolls and 24 party pies. So I've now got 12 sausage rolls and I've got, what did it say? 24 party pies. Well, hold on a moment. We let X be the number of sausage rolls. So they're now saying in code, let X be 12. And we had 24 party pies. So they're now saying let Y equal 24. Hold on a moment. I've got my values I can substitute into my formula. So I had C was equal to 1.3X plus 0.75Y. I now know X is 12. So I'm going to 1.3 times 12. Remember, between the 1.3 and the X's are times. Plus 0.75 times 24. And banging that into my calculator it gives me this fabulous value there of 33.36. Now, obviously, if there was longer numbers of decimal places there, I'd round to two decimal places. Is that my right answer? No, because that is in terms of dollars, and because it wants to know the cost, I'm going to put my dollar sign in. Again, that's the end of this video. I'm so sorry. Maybe one day I'll do an extra video uh, that will allow me to add more examples in, but for the moment, hopefully that's helped. Uh, again, the more practice you do, the better. I'm Darren Masguru. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, head to masguru.com, and tell your mates about my channel, and I will be deeply, deeply grateful. And if you can't do any of that, then my mum's just going to have to keep watching. Thanks very much, guys. Take care. I'll see you in another video, yeah? Stay safe. Bye-bye.